Let's take a look at this temperature sensor from Digilent. It's based on the microchip TCN75A temperature sensor. We'll review the features and programmer's model for this sensor and also take a look at a detailed configuration example. This is the sensor that's included in the NI MyRio Embedded Systems Kit. It's the Digilent PMOD TMP3, based on the microchip TCN75A located right here on the board. Let's take a quick look at the primary features of this sensor. It has one degree accuracy over a wide temperature range, nine to 12 bits resolution, taking anywhere from 30 to up to 240 milliseconds conversion time. Each additional bit doubles the time. This is based on I2C serial communications. The lower three address bits are, are accessible as pins. That means the device address can be set to any value between hex 48 and 4F. Supply voltage is 2.7 volts up to 5.5 volts. You have a user programmable alert output pin. You can control its polarity and temperature thresholds. And you also have con continuous conversion, one shot, and shutdown operating modes. Now let's look at the PMOD TM3 board features. It has duplicate I2C and power pins located right here. Every pair of pins is the same signal. This facilitates daisy chaining for multi-sensor applications. We have some jumpers to set the lower three device address bits. Those are located right here. We have a pair of jumpers to enable the 2.2K pull-up resistors that are built in for the I2C lines. These jumpers are not required when you are connecting to the MyRio MXP port because these are already built in for serial clock and serial data lines. We have a single jumper to enable the 2.2K pull-up resistor for the alert output, which is of the open drain style. It's located right here. The alert output itself is located right there, and you have an extra ground pin next door. Note that the MyRio digital I.O. pin already has a 40K pull-up built in. All right, let's get acquainted with the TCN75A programmer's model. We have three 16-bit temperature-related registers. Here's the measured temperature, or ambient temperature, set point temperature, and hysteresis. I'll come back to those in a bit. We have an 8-bit configuration register and an 8-bit register pointer. Note that all of the bits in the registers power on to zero, and that means we would have zeros right here. That means the register pointer initially is pointing at the ambient temperature register. This is where we get our measurement result. Now we have anywhere from 9 to 12 bits, and that depends on the resolution setting in the configuration register. By default, these bits are zero, and that selects the 9-bit resolution mode with a 30 millisecond conversion time. Now we have an upper byte, or most significant byte, and this reads out first. We have the lower byte, or least significant byte, and that reads out second. Note that the measurement result is a read-only register, indicated as RO. The radix point is located right here between the bytes. That means that we have the integer part of our measured temperature in the most significant byte. Then we have the fractional part of the temperature showing up in the lower byte. Altogether, this numerical value is the measured temperature in degree C. Note that you can increase your resolution up to 12 bits altogether. It does cost a little more time. This would be up to 240 milliseconds per conversion cycle. Let's look at a specific example of selecting bits in the configuration register. The one shot bit located right here when it's zero, then the, the temperature sensor is idle. Let's pick the full resolution of 12 bits. I'm going to select the default value for the fault queue, which is one. Come back to the meaning of that in a minute. The alert behavior, I'd like to have that be active high for the output, and I'll also select comparator style for that interrupt output. Shutdown mode, we're going to go with continuous operation. All together, we have this binary pattern expressed in hexadecimal as 
hex 64. Now, when the device first powers up, the register pointer is pointing at the ambient temperature register. However, we need to configure the device. That means we need to get the register pointer set to 01. Therefore, execute an I2C write operation at address 0x01. So you'd write out the byte value 01 and then write out the configuration register. That would be hexadecimal 64. Note that the configuration register is read-write. Important point, do not access any registers higher than address 03 hex. These are reserved for manufacturing test and calibration. It's important to make sure you do not go higher than that value. Now the register pointer value persists until you write a different value. It does not auto-index as is typical of many I2C devices. Now, to read the ambient temperature, you want to execute another I2C write and get the register pointer back to ambient temperature. Therefore, you would want to write out a zero value. At this point, you're, you are pointed at the ambient temperature register and ready to begin reading values. Here's the basic operation then. Execute an I2C write with hexadecimal zero to set the register pointer to the ambient temperature. Execute an I2C read operation for two bytes. Join these two bytes together into a 16-bit signed integer and then convert to floating point value. Divide by 256 and your result is the temperature in degree C. You can read the ambient temperature register as often as you like, but be aware of the resolution setting. There's no reason to read it faster than the conversion time that you've selected. Let's look at the shutdown behavior. You can set the shutdown bit in the config register, and that draws 0.1 microamps typical in shutdown mode with a two microamp max. And that's compared to about 200 microamps typical during conversions. The I2C interface is still active during shutdown mode, and you can read and write the registers. You can set the one shot bit in the config register to initiate a single conversion. Wait for the conversion to complete and then read the measurement in the TA register. The one shot bit will automatically clear to zero when you read the updated measurement. Now to begin wrapping things up, let's look at configuring the behavior of the alert output pin. Imagine that you are charting the measured temperature as a function of time. Now we have a threshold that by default exists in, in the temperature set register, and by default this value is plus 80 degrees. We have another threshold that is specified in the hysteresis register, and by default this is plus 75 degrees. Now imagine that you're taking measurements and you see the temperature kind of wander around like this, and suddenly crosses the set threshold right there. This will cause the alert to activate and it will remain active until it falls below that threshold established in the second register, that is the hysteresis register. That band between those two values is the hysteresis band. Hysteresis reduces rapid cycling of the alert when the ambient temperature hovers near that set value. You have two bits in the configuration register that are called the fault queue, and this adjusts the number of consecutive conversion cycles that are required to activate the alert. You can pick one, two, four, or six. And this reduces sensitivity to perhaps spurious spikes above that threshold. Now the alert output has two possible modes. The first one is the comparator mode. And in comparator mode, we look for this crossing, and then we look for the crossing right here. When the polarity of the comparator is set high, then the alert output looks like this. It's low, the event happens, it goes high, and then when we fall below the hysteresis line again, it drops low. With the interrupt mode selected, we're still interested in these two crossings, but now when you first cross T set, that sets the interrupt, and then the interrupt will deassert or go inactive upon reading any register, and that clears the interrupt. This event will generate a second interrupt, and again, you can read any register in order to clear that interrupt.